Counter strafing is a technique that you need to know about and today I'm going to be teaching you all about how to do it, what the best situations are to actually use it and when it really does come in handy. So first off we're going to break down the term of what actually is counter strafing and you're also going to need to know how to use it and the type of situations it's best to use it in and some big things to avoid when doing it because they both go hand in hand. Now if we take a look at the term counter strafing, strafing I'm sure most of you know what this means in gaming, it essentially means moving sideways left and right while keeping your eye on the target or whatever you are concentrating on in front of you. And then all we have left is counter and counter pretty much means the opposite or doing the opposite of what it is. In this scenario I'm going to put it as coming to a stop quickly. So if we take a look at it in game on the left you can see my keyboard and these are the keys that I'm pressing at the time on the recording and you can see what counter strafing looks like here. As you can see, essentially all I'm doing is moving to the right, pressing D, and then before I come to a stop, I essentially press A and just tap it. And counter strafing works vice versa, you press A to go left, then press D to come to a halt when you're just about to stop. And it's the exact same with W and S too, you move forward with W, you press S to come with a stop, and the same on the other side too. Now the reason why holding A and D to peak a corner in Valorant is quite good naturally is simply because it's a fast peak, also known as a Ferrari peak. There are two different segments to it. When you come round a corner, if you are pressing W and A at the same time, which is often how most people do because it feels natural to them, this is what it will look like. However, here's what you should be doing is pressing A instead of A and W. Just press A on its own and line yourself up in the right movement. When you do that, the W key is not going to be slowing you down anymore and you will simply be fast peaking on the left angle. Now that's great and all, but how do you actually come to a stop? If you're doing a really fast peak, it's hard for the enemy to actually spot you and take you out. How do you come to stop and then kill them? Well, that's where counter strafing comes in. And essentially, all you want to do is press A if you're going left and then tap it. That's all you need to do. One little tap of that other key will completely reset it. So now when I go around a corner, I'm going to be pressing A and then I'm going to be pressing D to stop when I see my enemy and I have found the target that I'm looking at. I'm strafing left and then I stop to take out the target. And you'll know when you are counter strafing correctly because your first shot accuracy will be a lot higher than if it wasn't. If I wasn't to counter strafe and I was just to press A and come to a stop naturally, it's a lot slower. Therefore, your recoil is going to be a lot different when you are shooting. And you'll either have to wait to come to a stop slower and then fire, which delays the time that you'll be shooting at your enemy by quite a lot. Or some of you just won't wait to come to that stop and fire whilst you have an inaccurate recoil because you're still moving. And this is what your recall and spray pattern will look like in Valorant when you are moving. Also known as the run and gun meta. <laughs> Here is what my recall pattern will look like if I go to fire on an enemy while I'm still moving and I haven't counter strafed. And then here is what the recall will look like when you are counter strafing and you come to that stop a lot quicker with it. Now there are a few key situations that you want to be using counter strafing in. Number one is when you're going to be clearing corners and clearing a site. And number two is also when you are in a gunfight. And number three is practically anywhere else where it might be deemed useful because it is one of them things where you will have to adapt with it. Number one, obviously, when you're going to be clearing a site, there's often a term called jiggle peeking, which is essentially counter strafing. When you are going to be peeking around a corner, you're technically jiggle peeking as you are going to see the shoulder of the enemy first before they see you. Oftentimes, pros will clear corners while counter strafing themselves which is able to clear a corner a lot a bit more efficient compared to wide swinging it. Not only is wide swinging bad itself because you are going to be exposing yourself a lot earlier to the enemy, but it also sets off your recoil control massively. If they hold an angle and you wide swing them, they're going to see you a lot quicker and then be able to react to you a lot quicker with their crosshair placement and exactly where you're going to be coming from. There's a reason why the best advice in Valorant is to simply hold an angle and never, never wide swing unless you really, really need to and have the confidence to. And now this does raise the question and you might be thinking to yourself, well, if I'm going to be wide swinging and I'm not meant to be wide swinging, how on earth do I clear a corner without going round it? The answer is counter strafing. You want to follow it like I'm doing right now. I'm clearing a corner and I'm clearing it bit by bit individually and I'm doing it when I'm counter strafing, which means if there is an enemy in that position, my recoil control, I have turned the corner so they can barely see me and I know now they're there. And I've also stopped my recoil control from going crazy because I've stopped moving. Therefore, I can take them out very easily. And as you can see, there is a massive difference when you compare this to wide swinging. Wide swinging gives you such a disadvantage, it's insane. Counter strafing is an easy way to efficiently clear corners whilst also keeping you safe and are keeping you able to take out an enemy if they are in that position. Then obviously the next situation is going to be during gunfights. Now you might not think this, and this might be a little bit crazy to you, but counter strafing 
can be very useful in some gunfights. When you are in a gunfight, you're often going to be standing still and you've either seen the enemy first before they've seen you, or you're just in a one-on-one -on -one gunfight. When you are in that one-on-one -on -one gunfight and your enemy has seen you at the same time you've seen each other, counter strafing can be useful. Now, this is going to be in a situation, for example, on Icebox, where you're both at long ranges, you've seen each other, you're kind of in a battle where, you know, you're doing everything from shooting each other, crouching, trying to avoid each other's shots. Counter strafing can come in handy here to give you that advantage over at your opponents. But you want to be using it in very, very situational areas because it's not always going to come in handy. You want to know when to use it and that is a big part of learning it, knowing when to use it and knowing when to break the rules. For example, counter strafing in that situation will give you the advantage of simply being moving. You are a moving target, but at the same time, your shots are staying accurate because you're counter strafing and coming to the stop with your A or D button just before you're about to take your shot. It makes you very hard to hit because you're moving and you can also still land back those accurate shots, whether you're holding an angle with it or simply out in the open. On angles especially, it is incredibly hard to win these gunfights. Sometimes it's just at the point where it's not even worth peeking the other opponent. But remember, you're going to have to know when to use it, because if you're coming on the flank on an enemy, you don't want to counter stray from there, just take them out, it's common sense. That does lead me on to when you should not use counter strafing. One of the main areas for me is going to be holding an angle. When you are holding an angle, you should be holding an angle that's actually viable and gives you an advantage over the opponent. That's the whole point of holding an angle. I want to give you one that sets up you for the kill, and that is the end of it. However, if you're going to be counter strafing while holding an angle, there's no point. You don't need that advantage of counter strafing. You're only making more noise and setting your crosshair placement off even more when you don't actually need it, you're just holding an angle that already has an advantage over the opponent, don't mess it up. Which is also why it's useful to think about what angles you are holding. Does it actually give you an advantage here, or is it very, very easy for the opponent to put it to where you are? And next up is flanking an opponent. This one is just literally common sense. If you are going behind someone, you have every advantage you need. Don't go counter strafing them when they can't even see you and they're not in a gunfight with you. And the next one is to gain intel on an angle. You never want to counter strafe for intel. You only counter strafe if you're going to take out a target or clear an angle where a target might be. The only time you should be counter strafing is when you feel as if someone's going to be there. Counter strafing is going to make you vulnerable when you peak the angle for intel. It's not used for that, it's used for taking people out. However, there is a technique for gaining intel on an angle without peeking and getting you to safety and not taking your head off when you go to gain some intel. And that's included on the video that's on your screen right now, so be sure to go ahead and click it. And drop a like on the video and subscribe if it did help you out and you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and remember that I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There's a link down below in the description. I would absolutely love for you to come over there and hang out with us in the streams. And let me know if you have any questions about the video or any future ones that we do release.